Hi, my name is Justin Sears and I'm Product Marketing Manager at Hortonworks. This is a brief product tour of Apache Storm. Storm is an open source project for distributed and fault tolerant computing in real time. I'm here today with Himanshu Bari. Hey guys, I'm a Product Manager at Hortonworks. I'm responsible for driving the product roadmap and strategy for integrating Storm with Hadoop along with our integrations with public and private cloud platforms based on OpenStack and Teradata and Astro products. At its core, Apache Storm has five key things, right? So the first is it's, it's a highly scalable, real-time event stream processing platform. And just like Hadoop, you can horizontally scale the platform by adding and removing nodes. Mm -hmm. Second is it is extremely fault tolerant. So if one node goes down, you know, the, the system still keeps on running and allocates the processing to other nodes. The third thing it provides is guaranteed processing, which is incredibly important in real-time processing. The fourth thing it provides is, you know, it's actually language agnostic. And this is very important when you go to an enterprise and the different types of developers want to ad adopt this platform. People know different languages. So with Storm, you can actually write the processing logic in any language you want and still submit the processing to Storm. And the last thing, which is very important, is it's, it's an Apache pro project. So it gets the Apache brand name, all the governance, and the big community that Apache has, Storm benefits from that. Why yeah. bring Storm into HTTP? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, in simple terms, that's what our customers wanted us to do, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why it makes sense for us to actually include Storm in our platform is, you know, for customers to get the maximum benefit out of Storm, it has to be very closely integrated with Hadoop. So by including Storm as part of our offering, our platform, it enables us to do that close integration. Okay. And, and why wasn't it integrated until now? Why wait? Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> so what, what is different? So, you know, when we look at bringing a technology like Storm to market, we, have, we need two things to happen. First is on the Hadoop side, Hadoop itself needs to be ready for integrating a platform like Storm. Yeah. With our HDP 2.0 release and now that Yarn is mature, you know, Hadoop itself can support processing workloads other than batch. So Storm can fit into Hadoop. And the second thing is Storm as a technology itself needs to be ready for us to bring it to market too. And over the last few years, we've seen Storm mature in the community. There's a huge community around Storm. And a lot of early adopters have actually not only adopted Storm for doing initial POCs, but there are production workloads running on Storm. So that's, that's a validation that this technology you know, solves the problem that it mm. set out to solve, and the community is rallying around that technology. So from both ends, it's the perfect time for us to bring Storm to the market. There's a distinct pattern that we see in terms of the types of use cases people address with Storm. So it really comes down to monitoring this high frequency data and doing two things, either mm. preventing something from happening or optimizing something. Let's take the example of the transportation industry. Now, truck-based transportation is a $600 billion industry in the US. It, it accounts for more than 70% of all the goods that are moved across the country. Mm. So now there are automatic devices fitted into trucks that really tr keep track of how long the truck has been running, you know, what route it is taking, where, st where it is making stops. Mm. So these companies are gathering all of these data. What we see customers now wanting to do with technologies like Storm is that as a driver is on the road driving that truck and making stops, they want to monitor his driving habits in a real-time fashion. They want to monitor the traffic in a real-time fashion. And they want to feed all that information into the truck in real time to and have, their, have the truck driver make decisions based upon what's happening in the real time. So that's, that's the value that Storm, uh, Storm provides, and it, it augments with the batch processing that's happening in Hadoop. How might somebody use Storm to monitor a social media stream and uh, respond? The way we look at it is that social media data analysis is a cross-cutting use case, especially for real-time analysis. It, it cuts across verticals. So you know, with Hadoop, you take all your social media data, store it in your Hadoop cluster, and do batch analysis to figure out you know, how did some of your ad campaigns impact how, what people were saying about your products in, in, in the social media. Mm -hmm. But with the real-time aspect of this use case, it's, it's much more in the now time. right? It's, you release some product, you release some ad, and you want to monitor social media in real time, not just to get those met metrics, but actually react to what, how, what people are saying about those products in real time. Time. How is a storm today? How is a storm cluster managed? First is getting Embody to manage cleanly across Storm as well as Hadoop from one integrated management platform, and the second is making Storm run on on Hadoop as part of Yarn. 
The second phase is all about the enterprise connectivity. And when I say enterprise connectivity, it's, it's actually at three levels. First is where you ingest data from. So when we talk about all these real-time data sources, there are a lot of different sources out there. You know, you got Clickstream, you got, uh, you know, you got your JMS-based messaging system that the mainstream enterprises are today capturing some real-time information already. So we want to, you want to build uh, connectors to some of these most common real-time data ingestion systems. Mm -hmm. right. And you, working with our customers, you already know what those systems, what those you know, top tier systems yes, are. Yes, absolutely, yes. We have we, we have some feedback on what those top tier systems are and we are working towards building data ingest connectors to those systems. Mm -hmm. The second the second layer is data persistence, right? Where do you where do you save data onto? Now being able to save data onto HDFS and HBase is uh, is the top request that we get from customers. So mm -hmm. in all likelihood that will already be taken care of taken care of in the first phase. So the third part is uh, alerting systems. Uh, as part of uh, being able to make decisions in real time, you know, there's a lot of uh, operational and alerting systems that need to connect to your real time processing platform. So you want to provide out of the box, connect to some of the common alerting systems uh, for that. What is phase three entail? Bear in mind, once we get to phase three, our expectation is that the mainstream enterprise would have started to adopt Storm and there would be a lot more adoption of Storm within the company, within a given company itself. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that you would have different types of groups wanting to use Storm, right? Mm -hmm. So you get into the Hadoop type situation where you, know, you, have, you have a single platform and you have a lot of different groups wanting to use that platform. And that raises some typical concerns around scheduling, for example, right? So Storm has certain scheduling algorithms built in today, but we need a lot of work to you know, do some tweaking and tuning on those algorithms so it can support a lot of different teams utilizing a Storm cluster at one time, right? So that multiple teams aren't piling on the cluster exactly. at the same time, yeah. you get performance issues. Right. And, okay. Go and so, so, yeah, so scheduling enhancement is one, and the second part is uh, how you really wire up all this processing logic in Storm to create the processing topology in Storm. Uh, today, that the, the, that mechanism is is, is uh, hardwired into the platform itself. Yeah. We want to up level that and make it declarative. So mm -hmm. you know, this is my processing logic. You know, these are the different components that I am tying together to create my processing topology in Storm. You know, the other team might have certain similar requirements, so they could they should be able to share this topology uh, from the other team or, or make some minor tweaks and reuse that topology. How do you make it easier for people to interact and manage? This, the storm. Yeah, so uh, Umbari will definitely act as a common platform. So when 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 an operator comes to Umbari based upon you know what his access level is, whether he is a common operator across Storm or Hadoop, right? When he logs into Umbari, he'll be shown the right set of servers and the different services running on those on those servers. So if you have a common operator across your Hadoop cluster and Storm, you will see a common dashboard of exactly what's going across all the different all the different servers that are running Hadoop as well as Storm, and that's incredibly valuable because in that one single view you can get a complete picture of your environment. Manchu, thank you so much for sharing all the great progress that you and the open source community are making with Storm. It's really exciting to hear all that stuff coming down the pipe. Um, and how it's integrating into Hortonworks data platform. Suppose I'm a Hortonworks customer or someone who's considering Hortonworks data platform. How can I keep up to speed on all the great progress in the months to come? How can I follow that progress? Sure, so we have a website where we've put out basic information on what is Storm, some more details about what the technology is about. Mm -hmm. It has links to our blog, which we will be constantly updating around you know, the proof of concepts that we're doing with the technology, some customer use cases, and so on. Mm -hmm. And we have a labs page where you can track the progress that we're making on the three phases of our roadmap. Oh, that's great. So the labs page is actually pre-release information on, on progress that you're Absolutely. making. Absolutely, yes. Fantastic. And then you can always follow us on Twitter and get real-time information on what we're doing.